Pete Kogel. He's king in the north. Well, I didn't vote for you.
guys clean their balls so that they're more enjoyable to play with. Well, there's finally a tool that can really get the job done. PC podcast. Cleans your balls.
me, it's Pete Kogler's PCB file in 62. Uh, it is uh, a Sunday, it is Sunday the 6th of May 2018 and uh, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful bank holiday weekend in the UK and we're uh, looking forward to uh, enjoying the most of it. But uh, for a few moments only, I shall be putting this podcast together and letting you get on with the rest of your day as well. Um, we had three tracks there, uh, the first of which was uh, Ceremony of Shame by, no, sorry, the last one was Ceremony of Shame by Candelabra, and uh, you can find them at facebook.com uh, forward slash candelabra.band. Uh, they are based at the Toulouse in France, and they're on Solange Indomie Records, uh, which you can find at solangeindomie.bandcamp.com, uh, sorry, solangeindomierecords.bandcamp.com, you can't spell that. Go to pcogo.com and you'll find information about this podcast at PCP-562. Uh, the track we had before that uh, was called Impulse.Second Level by Hunter. Uh, Hunter has got uh, two T's and two R's. And you can find more about him or her uh, at unitedstudios.ru uh, forward slash WR forward slash Hunter dash Awakening. I think that's the album it comes from. Uh, that's on USC, of course, as I mentioned, United Studios Records, uh, bc.unitedstudios.ru is one of the places to find it, uh, among other places. And then before that, we opened the show with something completely mad, as you might expect, of coming out of Ringe Raja Records, uh, at Ringe Raja, at, uh, where, where can you find them? You can find them at ringerajarec.nsf-music.com, or you can also find them at soundcloud.com, for ringe-raja-records. And that was a track called Fuyo Jokeki, 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 oh, whatever, Dash Freaky Pageant by Tara Lynn. Any more than that? I know nothing. Ringe Roger, of course, is based out of Berlin or Mannheim or both in Germany. Let's move on. This is Stally and the Breadwinners and a track called Bring It Back. <laughs>
infamy! They've all got it in for me!
at three more tracks there for you. The first of which was Bring It Back by Stally and the Breadwinners. They are uh, available at Dandara Records. Uh, you can find out more about them at dandararecords.bandcamp.com. Uh, they also have a Spotify page. You couldn't find out anything else. No website, nothing and say where they came from. But uh, there's a Spotify page if you have that particular platform. And then after that, in between, we had You Got uh, Your Dark Brown Eyes, rather, by Exe. Uh, that's uh, soundcloud.com forward slash Exe underscore horizons. That's E double X E underscore horizons. Uh, based out of Switzerland. And that came out of another Starfrosh album. I um, can't remember which one it was now, but it's quite a few Starfrosh albums. Starfrosh.bandcamp.com. Worth checking that one out. And then finally, we had uh, Lebanese Blonde by Molly Tigre. Uh, you can find them at Molly Tigre. Dot com, uh, based out of New York in the US, and I picked that up at Story Amp. Now, uh, I should have mentioned that Candelabra, uh, track three, uh, was one of the bands I've uh, reviewed recently at Echoes and Dust. And here's another one I reviewed from Echoes and Dust a while ago, and uh, I think I mentioned that last year because I played one of their tracks. This is another one. It's called DMTIV, and it's by Nest Egg. Well, following on from that, you shall hear a bit, a bit more of me uh, having a chat with Omar Willie from the, the Seattle Star. Um, almost at the end of that interview, <laughs> if you're getting sick of it. Um, so uh, have a listen to that after you've listened to the track.
there's one thing about the eclectic show is that it, above all else, it's it's personal. It's like a it's like making a mixtape for somebody. Yeah. In a way, you know, you <clears throat> when you make a mixtape, you make it for that person because you want to twist their mind in and out, or you want to tell them something in this particular mix of things. But that audience is is always going to be small, and in, with cassettes, of course, the, the audience is one. And I think the eclectic podcast has a similar function. You're trying to capture a range of people and a niche of people, if you want to look at it that way, who are willing to be turned inside out and who are willing to process the unfamiliar. And that's always going to be a small number of people at any given time, but the people who are ready for that will handle anything you throw at them and they will absolutely adore you for it. Mm. So after doing, what, seven different podcasts, you've sort of settled back into doing PCP and the Dub Zone, and that's all that remains, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. At one point, I remember going on holiday on vacation, um, and before I went on vacation, I set up all the, all, all the podcasts I needed to do in a, in a two-week period, and I realized I had to do nine podcasts in one weekend. Um, oh. And I realised that, that, that that's when it was it was I was I was just on a hiding to nothing. I was doing too much, and I needed to sort of come back a bit and, and make some sense out of it. So now um, it's it's much more relaxed. I still have I still have a bit of a schedule. I find if I don't have a schedule, um, I don't release at all. Um, right. And I know some friends that have no schedule and they release whenever they feel like it, and that and that works for them. Um, so it, it's each to their own. Um, being a sort of an IT planner sort of person, it's just part of my nature to have a, have a schedule and work towards it. So I'm quite happy with the monthly schedule of the dub zone and, and roughly weekly for PCP. Um, so that works for me, and it's it, it's just enough. Um, I can I can maintain my enthusiasm um, and want to continue like that way for a long, a long while. I am an old, 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 old b-boy from the 70s, you know, so I was hanging around, oh, you know, Grand Wizard Theodore and Cool Herc and the DJs who come from Jamaica into the Bronx in that wave, and I had met them, you know, when I was 10, 11, 12, and instantly fell into hip-hop, and so... I've always loved that music and I've always loved that scene, but the one thing that it has always been is it has been centered around, like, all African American music, really. It's built on quotation, but if you can't quote, then you can't make the music. I mean, and the copyright laws now have absolutely destroyed the ability for hip-hop DJs to quote their culture. And that's why so much of the hip-hop to me is uninteresting. I mean, I feel probably even <coughs> more revulsed by trap music than you do in a lot of ways. <laughs> you know, and I remember the first time I, I had this revelation that something was desperately wrong with hip-hop, and then it dawned on me why it was. And I was listening to this just catastrophically poor Eminem song. I mean, even by his standards, it was just abysmal. I barely even recognized it as his. And it dawned on me that there was exactly one sample in the song on continuous loop. Nothing changed. There were no modulations or anything else. And then I thought, oh, wait. He couldn't clear the rights to anything else. Yeah could only yeah. clear the rights for one sample. And then I started to hear that same thing with God only knows how many other artists. I heard one song today that was, it was all of a Fallout Boy sample, and that was the only thing, just looped for four and a half minutes. Oh my God, please stop. You know, the DJ's, well, the DJ's gone absent, of course, you know? Yeah, <laughs> At this exactly. point, the, DJ's, the DJ has, has gone to the bathroom while the record plays. <laughs> you know, and, and it destroys the relationship that hip hop has with its audience through the DJ, which is why you've got so many albums now that are produced by these hip hop stars who are all MCs, but DJs have turned into 
you know, dubstep, techno, electro, even the old ones like Curtis Mantronic, that's their thing. You know, they've totally left hip hop behind and I don't blame them. You know, it's so much easier to concentrate on pure sound than trying to talk to Warner Chappelle, you know, or BMI or <coughs> Bertelsmann Music Group to try to get clearance to sample a song. Did you ever see that uh, incredibly depressing study that uh, Duke University, if I recall correctly, did about how much it cost to clear the samples uh, in uh, Paul's Boutique? No, no, I don't remember that at all. Well, so this is my slight digression, then I'll get back to the main theme, but they calculated all of the samples on that album and the rights and it turned out that even though that album sold 9 million copies, something absurd like that, and made ridiculous amounts of money, the BC Boys record company would have lost $19 million even after all of the sales just in clearing the rights. Right. I mean, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and of course, that's exactly why you know, hip hop has gone to the stripped down, computerized beats, nothing recognizable anymore, you know, or one sample at, at most, because that's all anybody can afford. And it's even worse if you're an independent artist. So there's my rant for the day. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. <laughs>
Two tracks with a bit of chatting between there, the first of which was uh, DMTAV by Nest Egg. You can find it at facebook.com forward slash Nest Egg Band. Based out of Asheville, North Carolina, in the US, and you can find more about them at Fuzz Club, fuzzclub.bandcamp.com. Then we had a bit more from Omar, uh, Omar Willie, uh, over at Seattle Star, at seattlestar.net. Not quite sure when that interview he did with me is going to come out on uh, the Seattle Star, but I suspect it will at some point. He's a really busy man. And then after that, we had Running in the Rain by Too Much, and Too Much uh, came out from an album called Infusion, uh, I think. Yes, it was the best of album, Infusion Part uh, Part, uh, part five, Infusion Volume Five on Gravitas Recordings. Uh, definitely worth checking that one out. Uh, that's available at music.gravitasrecordings.com, and uh, you can find out more about uh, that particular track by going to well, have a look at the show notes. I said it before, go look at the show notes. Show notes. PCP five hundred sixty two is worth checking that out. Right, moving on. Bizu has got something out from uh, ODG. It's called Musical Spaceship. This is a track from it. It's called Hard Fragility.
then. Okay then. Okay then. Okay then. Okay then. Okay then. Any jungling guy? I got the Tarzan of Jada jungle just swinging on the vine this morning, mate. Jungle music. Jungle music. Jungle music all night. Jungle music. Jungle music. Jungle music all night. You wouldn't find Hitler playing jungle music. You wouldn't find Hitler playing jungle music. You wouldn't find Hitler playing jungle music all night. You wouldn't find Hitler playing jungle music. Jungle music all night.
three more tracks. The first of which was Running in the Rain by Too Much. Uh, that came out of Gravitas. You can find out more about them at uh, sanglab.com forward slash gravitas dash recordings or uh, music.gravitasrecordings.com. Voice out of Austin in Texas. And that's uh, for now uh, uh, various artists' album called in volume, uh, Infusion Volume 5. Uh, and then we had Hard Fragility by Bizu. Uh, Adam in Pompelier in France. Uh, and his album's called uh, Musical Spaceship. And then we had, all of after that, we had uh, Yesterday She Existed uh, by E.K. Um, that is on an album, um, 512 uh, album from Manum Manum Records, uh, which I think is called Inside. Um, any more than that? I know nothing. And then our final bit of the, uh, the selection was uh, Jungle Hitler by Luc Vibert, or Vibert. Um, and that's from Balkan Recordings at BalkanRecordings.com, based out of the UK, from an album called Acid Relief, which was set up for um, a relief thing for a couple of years ago, I actually think. Uh, um, and uh, you can find that particular album, as I say, at BalkanVinyl.Bandcamp.com. And that was a track called Jungle Hitler. And uh, yeah, one more track to go, and uh, then I shall be buggering off. So I hope you will enjoy it. It is by TK Bollinger. Um, what we had before, we had an EK, didn't we? What was it called? What was his name? Uh, where was it? I'm sure it was there somewhere. I'm sure I had somebody that had a EK. Yeah, we had EK on track 11, and then track 13, we've got TK. Hmm. TK Bonager and that sinking feeling. And you can find them at tkbonager.bandcamp.com, based out of Melbourne in Australia. Uh, not a surprise if I tell you it's from the Death Roots Syndicate, uh, a Death Roots Syndicate called Bandcamp.com for volume 8 of their mother, well, wonderful collections. And this is a track called To Lose the Darkness. And I should be going outside to make sure I don't lose the sunshine. See you soon, folks. <laughs> Yeah. 